They won't sit down with anybody. I have the best approach in the company, right? I said that so many times at Believe It. Now, you can't prove that, right? There's no scientific way to measure that. But all that matters is that I believe it. And so I never have a doubt in my mind if I get the door killed or if they you know, tell me whatever. You know, I don't sit there and think, oh, so-and-so could have probably done this and got in or whatever, you know, or gosh, maybe if I was looked like this, I could have got, no. You know, they won't sit down with me, they won't sit down with anybody. And then that led to, they won't buy from me, they won't buy from anybody. They won't get. The, they won't buy from me. I can buy from anybody, you know. So you have to believe it. You know, it's that conviction, and, and I truly believe it. You know. So um, I'm saying things like that in the car. I'm reading over the uh, their names. I'm saying their names out loud in the car. I'm gonna help. You know, Larry and Steve out. You know, Larry and Susie out. I'm gonna help Larry and Susie out there. They're gonna be awesome. They're gonna be home. They're gonna be healthy. They're gonna be happy to see me, and uh, I'm gonna make a friend today. And I'm saying that. So when I get to the door, I've already my bolt cords are ready to go. If you've been in a car for a few hours and you haven't said anything and you walk up to that door, what happens to your voice? Right. Yeah, right. And now you now you're now you're defensive. You know, you're already on the defense because you know you lost a little bit of confidence there, right? So I walk up to the door and you know my vocal cords are ready to go. There's no crack in my voice. I already know their name. I'm about to look down at the lead card. I've already got it memorized. Um, so so there's a lot of value that comes with that positive self talk. So so I pull into the driveway. I honk my horn. Beep beep. I do that for two reasons. One, let them know I'm here. Two, dogs. Dogs are a lot less likely to attack you if you warn them you're here. They mostly get freaked out when you sneak up on a dog, right? So you honk the horn, beep, beep. I get out and I wave my white flag, okay? I wave my white flag, right? What I mean by that is my leads. You know, I surrender, don't shoot. You know, that's my mindset as I walk up to this house, you know? Waving my leads, it's making a scene. It's making me seen so I'm not, you know, being like I'm trying to hide up to their house. No, I want them to see me, you know? And I bebop up to the door with confidence, okay? Bebop up to the door with confidence. You, know, you don't walk with your head down. You don't walk with your head you're on your phone. You know, you have, your, you, you have confidence about it. You know, you walk up there like you own that house. They're a guest at your house. So the approach is mindset, you know? Uh, and, and there's definitely some technical things, but man, I mean, I just feel like it's that aura around you, you know? And most of the time, that's why people want to sit with you. So like, man, this person is energetic, and I want to see what they've got, you know? I want to meet this person. So I, I try to be them, you know? So, you know, that's all kind of that free stuff, right? So I'm, I'm doing all that, and then I walk up to the door, and I, you know, do my little knock, whatever it is. I'm coming in. I back up as far from the door as I am tall. If you're six foot, or if you're, if you're somebody at 6'9", you know, you're, uh, you're, 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 you're that far. You're in the, you're in the road. You're in the road, okay? But no, you're, you're back as far from the door as you are tall, and uh, you turn to the side, okay? Because if you're facing them, this is, this is confrontational. They look out the door to see who's there, and I'm staring right at you in the eyes. Whoa, that's a thrill, you know? Or vice versa, if they, if they turn their, you know, open the door, and I'm like this. <laughs> Right? That's shady, right? Like, <laughs> shady. So when you're standing to the side, you know, they can check me out, they can see who I am, okay? I'm not staring them down in the eyes, I'm just kind of bebopping, just kind of looking up in the sky, and I got a smile on my face, okay? Your smile is your shield, man. Your smile is out of the world, okay? Uh, I smile so much at Southwestern. I worked in Texas for the summer. I had I had smile hand lines on my face. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I kid you not. I, my face. I had hand lines on my face from smiling so much. <laughs> Look ridiculous. But uh, so uh, you know. So I let them acknowledge me. You know, I knock. I let them kind of open the door before I just turn around and give them the biggest you know, smile I've ever seen. Right. And then it's low, slow, and in your voice. You're not some high-pitched, fast-talking salesperson. It, it's conversation, okay? And don't let the first words that come out of your mouth be the script, okay? A greeting of some sort, you know? Good afternoon, good morning, hey, how are you? Terrific, perfect, I'm terrific too, you know? Okay, right, but something, you know, hey, how's it going? Good, good. Hey, I apologize. I've got extra shirt from at the right place. Maybe you can help me out real quick. I'm looking for 123 Main Street. Okay, great. Uh, you must be Mrs. Jones? Perfect. Well, my name's Daniel. Nice to meet you. And the reason I'm stopping by is I'm following up on this card right here about the state regulated programs that help pay for final expense and variable. I just had to make sure it's at the right place. I left the information in the car. I'll grab it. I'll be right back. Okay, so that's the first approach. 
There's three breaks right there where you see where it says pause, 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 okay? If they acknowledge the card, on that, I'm hearing about this card was mailed in recently. If I get like a positive affirmation that they recognize the card, they're cool, I'm done right there. I don't have to continue on and keep spilling the beans and giving up all the goods, right? I can break it off right there. Perfect. Once I'm at the right spot, got the information in the car, I'll be right back. And if they're yelling at me, oh, what's this about? You know, I'm gone. I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gone. Uh, so then I go to my car. I left my car running. And I do. I leave my bag in the car. I just walk up there with the leads. And, and so you kind of saw the, you know, very much about body language. So you saw me as I walked up to them with that car. I'm Michael Jackson moonwalked, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and so I got that lead here, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it like this, right? Very defenseless as I close down that six feet down within like two or three feet, right? And if it's a 67 year old lady or whatever, you know, body language. So I'm just kind of presenting it like this. I don't look at it, I know what it says. And once they recognize it, I'm breaking off and getting my information. So now the second part of that one is that requested information on the state regulated programs. And you gotta say it like, don't you know what I'm freaking talking about? You know, state regulated programs? They help pay for final expense and burial. I'll tell you what, I left the information in the car, I'm gonna grab it, I'll be right back. So once I've got that third approach, there's you know to that part about final expense and burial. Once I've said that, I'm not giving them another chance to talk. Not going into anything else, I don't care. Because what's the point of the approach? Exactly, right, nothing else, okay? So so that's that's the first approach, and that works 99% of the time. You know, people ask, like, you know, I, I'm not kidding. I mean, I, I expect to sit down with 90 to 95% of my leads, you know, just cold knocking, or knocking doors, uh, and, and it works, you know. We track that, and uh, I was actually looked at my numbers the other day when we were looking at all that. Uh, for every three and a half doors I knock on, I run that. And that's, that's with their home or not. So if I go knock on seven doors today, I'm gonna write two apps. If I go knock on 10 doors today, I'm gonna write three apps. That's what my numbers say on the year. That's since September. So I don't know if it's gotten better or worse. Probably about the same. I didn't know it was that. I thought it was like six or seven. And I knew about it was six or seven doors. I thought, when well, I saw it yesterday, I was like, wow. All I have to do is knock on three and a half doors today, and I'm gonna write an app. And so there's a lot of power that comes from that, you know, that, that, that gives me a lot more confidence to know that stuff. So track your numbers. If you guys don't look at that Google uh, data sheet, that thing's awesome, man. So if you don't have access to it, get access to it and look at that thing weekly, daily, monthly at least. I mean, it's... Actually, I forgot to recognize something. So, you know, we had our awards Wednesday night for top applications on the year and actually um, top door knock applications, right? Like Max is number one, you know, because we do a hybrid, right? So he was number one for the entire year. Dan and his guy has been here like three or four months because they do all door knocking. He was already number two uh, and number three overall in the year already. You know, you're just, I'm just saying, y'all are really effective at what y'all do. Appreciate that. Yeah, almost 100 apps door knocking in the year. Uh, that's, I'm at like almost 100. Uh, the next closest here, according to the 34. And that's John Mark on my team. So we, we knock, you know, and it works. Okay. Um, so that's my first approach, right? Um, second approach, as I'm walking back up to them now, you gotta make it conversational. There's gonna, you know, they're out. Sometimes they go in the house, and if they go in the house, I'm letting myself in. <laughs> I mean, I'm letting myself in. I mean, if they go in the house, I'm, I'm at, knock, knock, I'm coming in. Hey, how's it going? And I'm in the house. You know, that, they, that's what they expected. I mean, very. I don't think I've ever ran into somebody that was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, now, I won't get into that, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all psychological. <laughs> You know, they're like, what's this about? You know, what's this about, right? Well, the first approach, their their mind probably was thinking about other things. They were thinking about what they were just doing, they're trying to figure out who I am. A lot of times they just don't even hear you. You know, you're talking too fast. You're talking, you know, whatever it is, they just don't simply hear you. So as you can tell, the second approach is basically the first, you know. I mean, so I just say, Oh, I'm sorry, I guess you haven't heard about me yet. What? That's okay, like I said, I'm Daniel. I'm here about this card. I got mailed in about some programs to help out with final expense and burial. Now, is this your handwriting? Or is this your husband's handwriting? Or, you know, and then, oh yeah, that's okay, perfect. Well, it looks like I'm at the right place. I'll tell you what, I got a lot of families to catch, and I kind of show them my stack of leads. Um, you know, and this literally just takes a couple minutes. You have a place to sit down. The old family, the old Southwestern, you have a place to sit down. People respond to action. You know, they're gonna let you in. If you, if you ask to get in the door, 
No, you got to like motion yourself to the floor. I'm telling you, just that little bit of, of action is, is God's gold. Because people are there, come on in, you know. Um, so you break that eye contact and you go for that sit and then, and then you're, you're in. And then if that don't work, okay, if that don't work, then it's, oh, you know, they're going to ask me a question. Well, you know what, I already got this. We already think I have to put this cover. We're not interested in this, you know. I'm sorry to waste your time. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. You might ask you a quick question real quick. That's okay. Little, little, you know, it's power symbol, right? It's, we all know Donald Trump does things like this, or people do, you know, these things. It works. Just throw it out there. Just distract them. You mind if I ask you a quick question? <laughs> <laughs> it just deflects the situation. You mind if I ask you a quick question? It deflects the situation, okay? Uh, and then you're right into it, you know. In order to qualify for these state regulated programs, are based off age and health. Um, you know, it says here you're 60, we're still 60. Okay, perfect. You ever had cancer? Right? You ever have heart attack, stroke, set? Perfect. Awesome. As I'm asking these questions, I'm starting to build rapport and core with this person. They're starting, oh yeah, I had a heart attack three years. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. You know, what happened? And we're talking. And we're already in the presentation. Right? And I find out, okay, this person's healthy enough to qualify. So I'm like, great. Well, based off your health, I think you're going to get you qualified. At this point, we've already done half the work. It'll literally just take a couple of minutes. You have a place to sit down? Or we can actually do it right over here. So, because I'm not going to sit there and fight this person if they're on oxygen or green. You know what I mean? Like, we need to make sure that they're going to be worth my time, too. You know, and, and, and build that core. Show them that you're an expert when you start asking them, oh, we're diabetic. You take gabapentin. You know, Genuvia, Glucoside. You know, you start naming all medications, right? And you're showing your expertise. And, yeah, and you mind quickly outline what core means? I'll, I'll get to that. Okay. I'll get to that. Uh, Excuse me. So, so we're in now, right? All right, I made it in the house. Woohoo! Okay, cool. Let's, look, the first words come out of my, house, my mouth, every single house I sit down with are, would you like me to take off my shoes? Stick with the Southwestern, it works. I do that for a few reasons. What do you guys think that is? Somebody says, why do you think I asked that question when I walk in? It's polite. Yeah, it's polite. It says, I'm here to respect your place, but we're also going to be here for a minute. Let's get comfortable. Yeah. Okay? I'm going to respect your place. We're going to be here for a little while. Let's get comfortable. And then the person that asks questions is the one that's in control. I walk in the house. I've already got control. I ask the question right away. I control the situation. You know, I'm dictating where this conversation is going. The one that asks the question is, if you don't ever have, if you lose control, and you've got somebody that's talking about this and that, you can't get them back on, just ask them a question. You know, regain control of the situation. So, I, um, and 99% of the time, they go, oh, no, you don't take off your shoes. And I'm like, okay, you know, the dogs don't take off theirs when they come in or whatever. And, and uh, you know, they got dirt floors or whatever it is. And, but, uh, so, you know, most of my shoes are usually staying on my ass. And then uh, now, I'm, uh, now I'm in the house and, and I do what I call a create a physical buying atmosphere. Okay, so everybody knows about a buying atmosphere, right? It's a concept, it's an idea, right? I create a physical buying atmosphere where buying can happen. An atmosphere where buying can happen. That means putting Mrs. Jones in her comfy chair or at the kitchen table where a lot of decisions are made. So the first thing I do when I get in the house is I'm rearranging the furniture if need be or I'm sitting on the floor. I want to be close enough to smack her and touch her if I need to, um, not, not across the room, eliminating distractions. If, I, if, if the TV's on, I'm asking them to turn that TV down immediately. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I can barely hear myself think. Would it be okay if we turn that down? I hate showing up at people's houses and having to turn a TV off, but would it be okay if we just did that for a few minutes? Or, hey, you might put the dogs up for a little bit, or, you know, whatever it is, you got to eliminate distractions. Because if they're watching TV or they're doing everything else in the world, how much are they paying attention to you? There's how much buying is happening in that atmosphere, you know? So, so that part's important, right? So you get the house, you, you make sure that you, you know, you want to be closed, but not too close. And um, all I'm doing for a while, about 10 to 20 minutes at least, is what we call the core. C O R E stands for children, occupation, recreation, and emotion. Children, occupation, recreation, and emotion. And that's how that's where I, we start the conversation with. So, you know, I get in the house and uh, I'm just observing. I'm asking. You know, I, I like to start at the beginning of their lives with my question. You know, so the first thing I'm doing obviously is noticing stuff in the house. You know, you can't not walk in the house and talk, say something about the house, right? Oh, this is a nice place. How long y'all been in here? Okay, cool. Where are y'all born? Where are y'all born at? You know, were you born and raised out here? So I'm starting at the beginning of their life. How do we have our lives, right? We're, we're born, 
We're raised, a lot of us have kids, we work to, support, work to take care of those kids, and then we kind of have you know, some recreation too in there, right? Some entertainment, so it just kind of flows that way. So I'm, now, you don't want to be interrogative about this, you want to make it very conversational, and, and, and so I'll be, oh wow, it looks like we've got a lot of children out there. There's a lot of grandkids here. How many kids do y'all have? So rather than just asking them, do you have children? You know? Right? Yeah, it's like, oh, cool, look, look, we got a bunch of grandkids in the area. That's awesome. How, how many kids do y'all have? Okay, do they live in the area? How often do we see them? How many grandkids do we have? Do we have a favorite grandkid? Right? <laughs> Ask them that. You know, who's your favorite grandkid? Who's the one you see the most? Oh, they always have one. It's the, the, I promise, they always have a favorite grandkid. <laughs> it's it's name, man. <laughs> and so that, that's when they're hot ones. Now I'm already getting their hot ones. That's, that's why they turn this part in, you know? Those are the people they care about, right? So we're talking about their children, you know, and, and I exhaust that C. I'm not moving on to O until I've exhausted the children questions, okay? Then I kind of move on to the occupation. Okay, are we, you know, we were home during the day, are we retired or disabled or, you know, we still working? You know, oh, no, I'm, I'm retired. Well, what'd you retire from? How long ago? Do you miss it? You know, things like that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not just asking them, do you work? Do you work? Okay, what do you do for fun now? Okay, now let's get into this. Right? <laughs> so there's a lot of like follow up questions to make it seem very conversational. Um, and people like to talk about themselves. Okay? People like to talk about they love, They're going to like you more if you let them talk about them. It's the wildest thing. We think we have to sell ourselves and make them like us. No, they're going to like you by you letting them talk about them. And, and a lot of our clients, you know, with especially COVID going on, they might not have company ever. I mean, I've knocked on a door before, and a lady told me, you're the first person that's ever knocked on my door. And I was like, oh, really? You know, I'm the first salesperson that's ever? No. You're the first person that's ever knocked on my door. Uh, anybody that's ever came over that just walked straight in, you're the first person that's ever knocked on my door. I was like, wow. You know, so it just shows you, like, these people, they're, they don't have all the company. They want that company. Okay? So, so be personable. You know, talk about yourself a little bit, you know, your children and things like that, but keep it focused on them. You know, relate real quickly. Don't sit there and go into some crazy story about yourself. Make it quick so you can relate and then you transition back to them. Okay? So we've asked about the children, we've asked about their occupation. Now, recreation is kind of a tricky one, you know, because if you don't ask this right, you're not going to get a good answer. You know, what are you up to these days? Oh, I can't do a whole lot. My health is bad. You know, you're going to get that a lot. Oh, I don't do a whole lot these days. We just kind of sit inside and watch TV. It's not very good. That's not a good answer for me. You know, so I'm going to start at, oh, okay, cool. You know, well, if you were filming on your good days, what do you like to do? You know, so I frame on your good days. Are we involved in churches, organizations or anything? And even if they're saying, no, I'm still digging and digging to find something that we can relate on. And this is where I'll start talking about things like mushroom hunting or, or other things in the area and try to dig that out and see if they know about that stuff or or even if they do say they watch TV, let's talk about TV then. What do you like to watch? You know, I mean, I don't care. Like, we're going to talk about whatever it is that you want to talk about. If all you do is watch TV, then I want to hear some good movies that you've seen lately. Okay? So now I've kind of exhausted this part, right? I can feel, I can feel it. it it's a feeling that I have. But I, I'm like, okay, this person, I know who they are. I feel like I know them by now. And once I've got there, now I can transition to the car. Okay? And so... You know, a lot of times it leads right into it because you're going to ask them, how's things going these days? And they're going to talk about their health. You know, they're going to be like, yeah, I can't do much. I've got a bad back or whatever. I can't get out and do things like I used to. Okay, well, hey, that tell you what, that leads me right to this. In order to qualify for these state-regulated programs, they're based off age and health. Now, if you've got somebody that's a little on the heavy side, in order to qualify for these state-regulated programs, they're based off age, health, height, and weight. And I say it like I said it to every single person I sit with. I'm not trying to single this person out and be like, hey, they're a heavy guy, you, uh, you know. <laughs> so, uh, now, uh, I saw Jessica yesterday. I wanted to bring this up. Um, height and weight. Here's just a quick little caveat on height and weight. Um, five foot tall, 200 pounds. Six foot tall, 300 pounds. Five foot five, 250 pounds. Five foot three, 230 pounds. So it's literally every inch is about 10 pounds. And so it gives you, it's not 100% accurate. Obviously, every carrier is a little bit different, okay? But that way, you, it gives you a guide what to go on. So six foot, 300, five foot, 200, you've got to figure out the rest from there, okay? But that's basically how the, you'll notice a lot of times, that's how a lot of these height and weight charts line up. Uh, they'll be within a few pounds of that a lot of times, okay? So, you know, based off age and health, 
uh, says here that we're, you know, 68. Are we still 68? Now, during the core, I'm relaxed, okay? I'm mirroring their body language. I am so far leaned back to this couch, you would think I slept there last night. You know? I'm, I'm, I'm so comfortable in, their, in this setting, you know? And we are just sitting here chit-chatting until, until it's time to go move on. And, uh, and so, you know, I, 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 I asked the... Uh, in order to qualify for these state regulated programs, they're based off age and health. It says we're 68. Okay, perfect. Have you ever had cancer? No, never had cancer? Perfect. Heart attacks, strokes, stents, pacemakers, chest pains, anything like that ever? Perfect. Awesome. Any diabetes? Okay, we're, we're diabetic. Okay, when were you diagnosed? You know, do we use insulin? Any complications? I'm digging here. Now, I'm not going into medications necessarily, maybe on some big ones. I'm only looking for like the red meds, I call them, those, you know, the gabapentins, the nitros, the, the COPD inhalers. Not worried about blood pressure medications right now, or cholesterol medications. We're, we're it's, a, it's a, just kind of a, a quick glimpse into their health. But it's CHDL, cancer, heart, diabetes, and lungs. Okay, now here's the fifth knockout question. Bank account. Maybe we have less carriers for green cards than we do for, you know, Diabetes or something, right? It's it more of a knockout than a lot of our health things. So there's a way to ask for bank. I'm doing this pretty early on in the sit. You know, I'm, I'm, I've been in this house 15, 20 minutes now. I'm about to ask this person today for bank. But I can do it. I get away with it every single time when you work like this. So, you know, cancer, heart, diabetes, lungs, kind of anything else, kidney, liver, memory issues. You kind of joke about the, the, the memory, you know, you have any CRC. You, have CR you can't remember crap. <laughs> Right, so be, be funny, make money. Okay, be, be funny, make money. You have, I have a, a seven-year-old lady told me that. CRS, actually, is what she said. I have CRS. I think you know where that one's going, right? Uh, and then, uh, it's crap. Yeah, and then there's another one. And, uh, the, so I said that one. I used that one for years now, and then another person hit me just a couple weeks ago. Crap, I have crap. Like, crap, what's that? Can't remember a freaking thing. Right? So they didn't say freaking. <laughs> So, you know, be funny, make money, okay? Uh, perfect, well, it sounds like we're healthy. Now, you said you're on a fixed income, right? Perfect, we get a check every month? Okay, awesome, when that check comes in, does that go to the mailbox, the bank, or all of those little green direct express cards? Every single time, word for word. When you get a check every month, right? When that comes in, does that go to the mailbox, the bank, or all, and if they're, they're cutting me off at this point, oh, it goes to the bank, I'm finishing. Or on one of those little Green Direct Express cards, okay? Because what do people think their Green Direct Express card is a lot of times? Thank you. Thank right? you. Yeah, because where do they get their money off the card at? They go to the bank, you know? So they think their Green Direct Express card is a bank account. We all know it's not. So get that out of the way because there's nothing worse than going through a, a, an hour presentation with this person and finding out at the end they've got a green card. We've all been there, done that, and it will happen to you, okay? You, but if you ask this at the beginning, you'll, you'll, you'll knock that out. Uh, those are knockout questions, okay? Because I'm, I'm, my time is valuable. Thanks to Ian, my time is very valuable, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I found out yesterday, right? So I'm, I'm sitting with qualified prospects. So they got to play by my rules in a sense. You want to do business with me, you got to do it the way I want to do business, okay? Uh, so cancer, heart, diabetes, lungs, bank. Awesome, I know this person qualifies now, okay? So there's two ways to go about this at this point. One, for new agents, on our team especially, they're trained to call in the home. At this point, you call in the house. And sometimes it's a real call, sometimes it's a fake call. Um, and if it's a fake call, make up a reason, you know. Hey, I'm just sitting with a 68-year-old male. Just wanna make sure I get him qualified. Overall, he's pretty healthy. Um, he does have some arthritis. Uh, do you think he'd be able to get qualified for these? Wow. Okay, yeah. You can make up a reason to call if you need to. And then, and then call your, build your upline, you know, so it's something like, cool, well, hey, I, based off your health, I think I get you qualified, but we're just kind of training to get a second set of ears on this. I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. So I'm, I'm going to get an expert on the phone. I'm going to get my manager here. We'll just make sure, hey, Dan, how's it going? Good, good. I'm sitting here, Mrs. Jones. I'm just going to see if I can get her qualified. She's 72. And now, if they're a new agent, you know, I'm going to dig in harder on their health stuff because odds are they probably miss things, right? Um, and then as, they're, as I'm sitting there asking them these questions, the family, the new agents sit back there, they're learning from me still. So they're in the house, and I'm still training, even though I'm sitting with the family myself most of the time. You know, I put myself on pause. If, if I lose a sale because I answer your phone call, it's worth it to me. You know, because I'm here, to, I, I want to make you sales. I'll lose one or two to make you a sale. And my team knows that, you know. 
phone. So if I can take the call, if I'm not on the phone, I'm gonna answer it. And, uh, and then it's so important to call on that front end because later now, if they have an objection and they call me, I've already spoke to that thing. I've already got some rapport with them. I've already talked to them. You know, I always joke, you heard me on the calls, it's like, you know, how's, how's Austin treating you? Has he taken good care of you so far? And the family's like, oh yeah, he's great. I'm like, he's not being a rascal. You know, and, and, and we have fun, man. And I, I sit there and we talk to these families and if I can get them to talk to me and open up, people in the house will tell me, man, you changed that entire sit. You know, they went from this to this. You know, just from getting an expert on the phone who basically said the same things that you said, but it came from another person, and they realized there's a lot of people out there doing this. And, and what he's telling me is correct, because this guy just kind of verified it all, too. So, now, maybe myself, if I know they're going to qualify, I'll say something like, okay, perfect. Well, hey, I'll tell you what. Um, based off your health, you're as healthy as I am. You know, that's awesome. You should have no problem getting qualified with anybody. Uh, what, what's your secret? How are you so healthy? So I just kind of congratulate them and build them up, you know. Um, I'm, I'm an experienced underwriter at this part point, so I know what I'm talking about, but for you new agents, even if you think you're going to qualify, still call. And even for myself, if I've got somebody that's maybe not quite opened up to me, I'm going to call too, you know. I'm definitely going to call and, and, and use my resources as well. Um, so that, that's, that's a big part of this is, is getting qualified, obviously. We, we ask those questions there. Um, and and like, congratulate them on their health. You know, should they be qualified? I don't really say. I'm not telling them much about this bill. And then I'm going to ask them uh, the, the need. This is where we. Uh, this is where I find the need. So I say, okay, well, hey, I've been doing this for a little while, and I've noticed that this card means something different to everybody I sit down with. So for y'all in particular, you know, with everything going on in the world today, and everything going on in y'all's world today, when I say things like final expense, or funerals, or burials, or cremations. What comes to your mind? Or what was laying on your heart when you nailed that card? When I say things like final expense, funerals, burials, or cremations, what comes to your mind? Or what was laying on your heart? And you just shut up. And if you frame it like that, you're going to get a good answer. If you, you know, we used to start it out, I just said, okay, well, hey, I want to ask you a question. What was laying on your heart when you nailed that card out? And you can give all kinds of crazy answers. Like, my heart, my heart's fine. You know, or, 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 or I just wanted some information. Yeah. You know, I just wanted some information. Oh, cool, I'm going to get you the information. But when I say things like, so I'll repeat it sometimes. If I don't get a good answer, I'm just going to repeat it. Yeah, no, I'll definitely going to get you that information. When I say words like that, what comes to your mind? And I'm really digging it. And they're going to say, so for this example, we're going to be sitting with a, this is a double. This is, you know, Jack and Jill Jones and, uh, and, uh, you know, Jack says, well, I, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, everything was taken care of when I passed away. Oh, I, well, absolutely. I can see why you mailed this off. Uh, have, have we ever had to plan a funeral for a loved one before? Have you ever had to plan a funeral for a loved one before? Such a powerful question. Have you ever had to plan a funeral for a loved one before? Whether they say yes or no, a lot of these people have. And you're going to talk, oh, my gosh, so who was that? Oh, it was your child. Oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry. You know, when, when was that? Were they buried or cremated? You know, did they have anything in place? You know, did we, what do we got that? And then if they tell me, you know, things like, I just want to make sure I was taken care of, I'll ask them a question like, have you seen people pass away without this taken care of before? You know, have you ever seen this, have you seen this when someone doesn't have things in place? And they'll say yes. You know, yeah, it's not an easy thing. It's the hardest day of their life. Um, so, so you know, he tells me that, and and, uh, and so when you're sitting with a double, the idea is to kill off dad, okay? Dad's dead. <laughs> dad's dead already, man. Like, if, we're sitting, if I'm sitting with mom and dad, dad's dead. The whole conversation, this is about mom. Dad's already died. Bring death to the doorstep. So I'll show you how I do that here in a second. But, um, you know, have you ever had to plan a funeral for a loved one? I tell people that planning a funeral is a lot like planning a wedding. The biggest difference is for a wedding, you get six months or a year to plan it. For a funeral, you get 24 hours. And it's going to be the hardest day of Jill's life. And now she's sitting across from a businessman. She's sitting across from a funeral director on the hardest day of her life. And what's the first thing he's going to ask her? And I do that. What's the first thing, what's the first question he's going to ask? And I'm looking at the man, I'm saying, you know, she's at the funeral, sitting across from a funeral director. He's a businessman making business decisions for his family too. What's the first question he's going to ask her, do you think? And they're going to say, you know, 
oh, do you have insurance or you know whatever? Yeah, absolutely. How are we going to take care of this today? How are we going to take care of this today? That's the first question you're going to ask. Once that question's been answered, now she can make the rest of those decisions without stress or guilt. Once that question's been answered, now she can answer the rest of those questions without stress or guilt. That's exactly what this is for. Now, have we talked about this? Do we know what we, what we want? You know, are you all looking to get buried or cremated? Do we know how much that might cost these days? You know, it, obviously we don't know who's gonna be the first to pass here. You know, statistically speaking, men don't live as long as females. I tell them something like, you know, we don't know who be the first to pass here. Heck, out of the three of us, maybe I'm the first to go. I drive a thousand miles a week. I say, maybe I'm the first to go. I drive a thousand miles a week. Now, statistically speaking, though, men don't live as long as females, and, and you're a couple years older, so statistically speaking, you might pass away 10 years before Mrs. Jones. Mrs. Jones, then when you pass away, who's this going to fall on? You know, who's this going to fall on? Oh, okay, cool. And I write that name on my lead card. I'm taking a lot of notes on the lead cards. When I ask those knockout questions and everything, I'm writing all over that lead card, okay? And I'm putting, you know, their son Chris's name on the thing or whatever, and, and okay, wow. Well, that's, that's who this is for. That's who I'm here for. Have, have you talked to Chris about this? Does he know what you want? You know, say yes or no. And, okay, well, you know, I can talk to you about this subject, but I'm not sitting down at the table and talking to my mom about this. If I had to guess, it's probably a lot like that for him, right? Not the most pleasant subject to talk about. Well, now I'm going to ask the two golden questions. These are my two golden questions. I ask them every time. I'm going to say, okay, well, how long have y'all been thinking about this? You know, I'm afraid of something like, is this something that we've been thinking about for a long time, or how long have we been thinking about this? Okay. We've been, oh, wait, wow, we've thought about this for a few years. Oh, wow, so sounds is this important to you? Second question, how important is this to you? Now, I ask those questions there. One, it helps at that point, but two, again, I'm just trying to cover my objections. Now, later, if that family tells me they want to think about it, the heck you are. <laughs> you already told me you've been thinking about this. Yeah, right? How are they going to use that? They already told me they've been thinking about this for three years. Or if they tell me they can't afford it, well, how important is this to you? How important is this? You said this is important. How important? Is this important enough to change your budget a dollar, two dollars a day, three dollars a day? Is it important enough to, you know, to get rid of a soda or, or cut back on two cigarettes a day? I mean, how important is this to you? You said it was important, right? It's also hold them accountable. So if you ask them on the front end, they can't use that objection now. You know what I mean? That's why the closing percentage is up there, you know? So I don't get those objections. I asked them, they told me they didn't think about it for a long time. They can't use that anymore. Okay, cool, awesome. Um, also, yeah, this is important to you. Perfect. Well, I'll tell you what, based off your age and health, I should be in a position to help you out in a big way. So I'm going to go through this last little bit of information here. We're just going to figure out this is for you now, okay? So like I said, my name's Daniel. It's nice to meet you, okay? And, um, you know, a lot of folks are surprised that I showed up in person. You know, you mailed that little card off, you probably thought you were going to get some mail back, right? Well, the reason I'm here is because I can't fit inside your mailbox anymore. <laughs> but uh, really the reason that we're here is we're just a lot like y'all. You know, we believe in good old-fashioned face-to-face service. You know, eye-to-eye, man-to-man. You know, I look at the man when I say that, eye-to-eye, man-to-man. Um, and I'm going to make sure that you understand this like the back of your hand. Because if the table was turned, I'd want y'all to do the same for me and my family someday. Okay? Because a lot of times people take care of this, you know, they get their burial coverage through the mail. With Glow Life and Colonial Pen and, and AARP and... And, you know, we see that stuff every day in the, in the mail, right? I mean, and where does that usually end up? Yeah, right in the trash, right? Okay. And now don't get me wrong, okay? Those are great companies, but they're huge. They're, they're hard to get a hold of. And if you do get somebody on the phone, half the time they don't speak English that we can understand. Okay? So you're not going to have that here. For one, I'm going to be your agent for life. Very something right there. I'm going to be your agent for life. You can have my cell phone number. You can call me day or night. Your family, they can call me day or night. Okay. So that's the first thing that sets us apart from those companies. The second thing that really sets us apart from those companies are waiting periods. Okay, where a lot of times it takes two years before coverage kicks in. Have you ever heard of that before? Were you aware of that or not? And, and I'm, I'm asking them that question every time. Did you know about that two-year thing? Some do, most don't. And I'll kind of bring up, you know, when you're watching TV and Alex Trebek pops up there and says, no health questions asked, guaranteed coverage, 50 to 80. You're thinking, yeah, right. You're gonna sell a life insurance policy to an 80-year-old man without asking if he has cancer and AIDS and diabetes and oxygen if he weighs a thousand pounds. 
they will sell that man a life insurance policy, okay? But the catch is he has to live for two years. Now, when I sit down with folks who have some health problems, like that's the route I have to go for, okay? They're a high risk. But that's not y'all. There is no reason, based off your health, that you should have to wait two years for coverage to kick in. So if we get you, if we get this, you know, if we get you qualified, your coverage starts effective immediately, day one. It don't take two years to kick in, it doesn't have to take two days to kick in. At the start on you today and have them who passed away tonight, it's gonna pay out 100% day one. So that creates immediate peace of mind for you, and that creates an immediate savings account for your family. Okay. So, okay, yeah, so we help folks out with what's called whole life. We're familiar with what whole life is. And I'm, I'm asking questions the whole time. Okay? Are we familiar with what whole life is? Some do, some don't. You know, kind of explain to them quickly. You know, term, term is, right? It gets its name from that. Uh, term coverage is going to cover you for a term. You know, five years, 20 years, you have to die on their terms. If you don't die on their terms, you don't get anything out of this policy. And so I wrote down the words whole and term on my lead card. I'm going so they can visually see it. And for term, I'm showing them, I'm crossing it off. I'm showing the price goes up visually with the arrow. And I'm putting on there five years to 20 years, age 75, I'm crossing that off. That's not, don't worry, that's not what this is, okay? What we do is we help people out with whole life. And that covers you for your whole life. It never cancels, it never expires, uh, no matter your age, no matter your health, whether we like you or not anymore, okay? Uh, uh, it, it literally covers you for your whole life. Uh, the rates never go up. And, and your coverage never goes down, okay? So you're locked in. Um, being on a fixed income, that part's really important, right? Being on a fixed income, that part's really important, isn't it? Um, you know, they build cash value. If you ever have to borrow against them someday, you can. Not recommended, but it's there. Uh, the cash value just helps make sure that you don't pay in more than you're gonna get out of it, okay? Um, we already kind of talked about it. It's, it's gonna cover you immediately. It's day one coverage. There's just no health exam to get qualified. I'm not gonna poke you or prod you or, or draw your blood or there's a man, I'm not gonna make you cough. Don't worry, I'm not gonna make you cough. It's simply based off of your budget, what you can and can't afford. Okay? And so the question on everybody's mind when they mail these cards out is, you know, what happens when I pass away? And we know the answer to that is a sad, hard day. It's going to be the hardest day of Jill's life. And, and the first thing that happens, Jack, is that you're going to create a bill that Jill's going to have to pay. And so that question is, did I do the right thing and take care of that bill myself? Or did I leave that burden on my loved ones? And it's just my job to get you the peace of mind and we have this all taken care of. So with that being said, let's figure out where the rubber meets the road. All right, so that, those lines kind of resonate with them. You know, what our, what our clients tell things like, you know, notice like the back of your hand or the rubber meets the road or, you know, so the screen shared up here. So at this point, let's figure out where the rubber meets the road, okay? Uh, and then I kind of pull up my iPad here so I can go to my rate calculator. I don't really know who I'm going with at this point. I got an idea, you know, I'm trying to stick one of the main four, obviously, are fleet carriers. Uh, going with the most affordable one of those is usually what I do. Um, if I have to go with somebody else outside those main four, then, um, then I will, obviously. But, you know, our carriers are fleet carriers for a reason. Uh, lead with them, but if you can't get them with them because of price and policy or any of health wise, then you have everybody else. So this is my pricing sheet. There, I'm going to do my pricing. Two, there's two ways to do your pricing, okay? And it kind of depends on them. You can price off their budget. You can price off of the final expense need. Okay, this thing kind of allows both. So um, I kind of pull the person out. Um, you know, I prefer to get their number from them. You know what their budget is. That's definitely the more preferred way. But the second way is to dig a little bit. To dig out. So my perfect. Well, like I said, this is affordable. But what's affordable for one is not always affordable for everybody else. You know, some folks they say, Dan, for me and my wife. Uh, this needs to be less than three hundred dollars on our car insurance. I'm like, heck yeah, no problem. <laughs> I got this. But uh, you know, most folks are on a little bit higher budget. You know, they say, Dan, you know, this needs to be less than two hundred dollars for both of us. One hundred fifty dollars, one hundred dollars, right? You know, what's something comfortable for y'all? It won't take food off the table, but we'll make sure that we have good coverage in place. 
And if you can't, you know, they, they give you a number or they don't, a lot of times they won't sometimes, you know, you've all seen that. So what I'll do if they won't is I'll go, okay, no, that's okay, I get it. Didn't, didn't plan for this, didn't know exactly what's coming or anything, but uh, let's figure out what's definitely unaffordable. You know, like $200 a month, would that, oh, no, I couldn't do anything like, okay, well, $100 a month, oh, no, I couldn't go there either. Okay, you know, so I already narrowed it down, right? Now we're, we're, we're getting somewhere. So what's, what would definitely be unaffordable? You know, I'm always trying to start with price, man, right? What would, you know, what's, what's the max? What would definitely be unaffordable? Oh, I could do, you know, 60 bucks. Okay, I'm putting 60, 70, 80, something like that. 60, 75, 90, something like that. Um, and then, so here's a little tip. This face value, this death benefit, 10,000, whatever you're right here, that's big font. My 10,000 is, okay, it's huge, right? And then when I write that premium, that $43, it's tiny. <laughs> okay, it's a psychological thing, right? They see that 10,000, that's a big, huge number. That 43 don't look so big anymore, <laughs> right? So, so the Jedi mind tricks, right? So <laughs> big font, big font, tiny font, big font, tiny font, tiny font. Okay, uh, just a little small thing there. Uh, and then the last thing about the pricing sheet is very important. This part is awesome. Uh, definitely the super Jedi mind trick. Um, all right, boss. Well, uh, as long as I get you qualified, um, here's some options for you. Okay. You take it from me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're gonna take it from me. I'm not giving this to you. The first time they go take that slip of paper from me, I promise you, they're not getting it. I got a death grip on that thing. Yeah, you held it for a I did. Yeah, you held I got a death grip on that thing. Yeah. It's a psychology thing. When they take that from me, as they're they're saying, "Give me that. I want that. Give me that. I want that." So I don't just hand them the pricing sheet. They're taking that thing from me. The first time, their paper is always gonna slip off of it. Oh. Then they're going to reach for it that second time. Second time, it's, I give it to them on the second one, but they caught that. <laughs> they caught that. Oh, yeah, right. yeah. So they take it from me. I don't give it to them, okay? Um, I want them as it's a tiny instant thought that goes through your brain and says, give me that. I want that. Okay? Yeah. So, um, and, then, and then while they're looking that over, I'm not going over that stuff with them. Now I'm in my clothes. All right, perfect. Well, while y'all are looking that over, I just want to make sure I get y'all qualified. And then I pull up the app or whatever, I start reading the health questions. I'm not even addressing that yet, okay? Now, the other way you can price it is off of um, the cost of funerals, right? So, cool, you all told me earlier, you know, you want to get, you know, we want a burial. And you said that was how much these days? About $10,000? Yeah, that's crazy, isn't it? Now, that, that's today's cost. Do we, do we think the cost, we're, we're not going anywhere today, right? Do we think the cost of funerals is going to stay the same? Or is that going to go up or down someday? You know, is the cost of funerals, is that going to stay the same, or do you, you think that might go up or down someday? Oh, it's going to go up. Yeah, right. Everything's going up on our wages. Every, everything's going up on our wages, right? You're absolutely right. So we know in 1950, a funeral cost $459. We know in um, 1970, it doubled to $956. Look at that today. The average funeral has gone up 10 times. It's now $9,800. So the Social Security, when you say they've kind of got this thing figured out by now, they've been tracking this stuff a long time, they know about how long we're supposed to live. So kind of based off your, your age, uh, the Social Security here has got an inflation factor for us. So as a 62-year-old male, if it's $10,000 today, your factor is 1.97, that means that your future cost could be as high as $20,000 someday. Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, cool. So. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put, okay, cool, so $10,000 is the top one, but that's kind of where we need to be today. $15,000 is that middle one, because that's kind of where it's going to head to here shortly, and then $20,000 might be, that's where we might need to be at the end. And so I price it that way. So that's what this thing's for. I sent this out. I can resend this out. You're all welcome to use this. Um, and then that question at the bottom there is, is you know, how is that at the end? What's the turning factor? What's the decision that's something? But it's, you know, just a nice machine. Um, I like the, the color. The colors help. My friend, I'm colored. People like that red. Um, they make them take it. I try to see what that feels like. It's, it works. Real quick, I have relation charts for like what yeah. sort of a period of time. That, that's, that's based off their life expectancy. 
So that's why the older people like the 87, 89 year olds, it's not much higher because odds are they're, you know, but, but like a 50, 40, 40 year old, that funeral if it's 10,000 today, it might be $40,000 over the next 40 years. Okay. So it just kind of plants that number in their mind. And, um, you know, even if they don't get the 20, you know, I, I get a lot of, I get a lot of premium this way. So that sheet is available yeah. to us on, yeah. on, I guess, on band or something? Uh, I posted the box a long time ago. I could read we'll get it out. Yeah. We'll okay. On and one last question. Would you, because you got Jack and Jill, you'd be trying to write two policies? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. One, one on each. Oh, not okay. a joint survivor no, have, or anything like that? No, I'm not making it complicated. Yeah. Gotcha. Yep. Maybe just write, write a double here. So, and, and there's some, you know... <laughs> Don't be afraid of doubles. I know a lot of times new agents are like, they get freaked out, they think it's harder. I think it's easier. You got the beneficiaries right there. It's a lot easier to create this emotion. You know who the beneficiaries are. So between all the door knocking you do, when you do run into one legged, you still are Yeah, no, it's the same stuff. I'm just not hitting them with all the like, you know, not killing off dad first. So. But you make a point that they come back or do you Oh, you mean if they are a double? No, yeah. Yeah, like I'm gonna call well, I call a one legger home. Yeah, I am I'm, I'm coming back. To get both of them? Yeah, to get them both together. Okay. Unless there's something crazy with their schedule, he's out of town, something like that. She's definitely the decision maker, but even if she's definitely the decision maker, we all know that she's usually not still the definite decision maker, right? So I'm not gonna, yeah. So you'll, 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 you'll know that? You'll, you'll, I'll dig a little bit. You know, a lot of times women do kind of handle this more, or sometimes, you know, they're only looking for coverage on one. So I'll fill that out a little bit as I'm kind of setting the appointment. But yeah, mostly just basically at that point, I start setting the appointment at the door to come back, and then I'm digging a little bit to make sure it's going to be worth my time again, um, and things like that. But yeah, I'm trying to sit with them definitely together. That way we can. That way they, they're you know, they don't talk about it, right? So we have about three or four more minutes. Okay, cool. Um, I was just going to ask at this point, have you asked them if they have coverage, existing coverage? That would pay during like the. Um, yeah, I would have asked them during the um, but just funeral, the like during the that inflation factor, even if they've got coverage, you yes. built the beach yeah. still. It got ten thousand, but now they know they might be twenty someday. Yeah. So okay. So then I hand them this, um, you know, I hand them the pricing sheet and I uh, and I go into the app. I'm not I'm not asking them, you know, which one of those or anything like that. I'm uh, you know, I'm onto, the, I'm onto an app, and, and I'm like, oh, well, while you're looking that over, I have to make sure I get you qualified. You know, and then I'm reading these health questions, and I'm wanting them to say no, no, no. Because as they're saying no, it's actually yes, yes, yes. You know, you're building yes momentum with those no's. Um, so then you, you ask those health questions, and then a very important line I, I always use is, uh, I say, perfect. Um, well, most important question I'm going to ask you today, who will be your primary beneficiary? And it's pen to paper, head down, right? That's the close. Most important question I'll ask you today, who will be your primary beneficiary? And then you get the beneficiary, then you come back to their names, you know, their date of birth, you're talking about the address. You're trying to get them to give you some of this information instead of just reading it from the card. If they're volunteering information, that's a good sign. You know, they're, they're helping you with their address, and they're, they're into this. Um, but you're pulling some of this up in the lead card, and, and then um, you're, uh, the social is last, so I'll, I'll ask social after one or two things. I'll ask the social, and I just say that's all the gossip you buy to social, but um, I'm like, okay, date of birth, 7 20 42. Okay. You said 7 20 42? Yep. Social. <coughs> that's it. One word. They've already, they just gave me numbers. It's a lot easier. They're, they're just passing out digits at this point. Or I'll say, are you a citizen? Yes. Social. Kind of verifying they're a citizen, right? So uh, it's just that simple. And, and you're not going to get the social objection if you built that trust in the front end. If you're getting that social objection right there, it's because you, you jumped into it too quick or you thought they don't trust you enough yet. And it's hard to regain this at that point. So uh, just keep it simple. Perfect. Uh, you get that all filled out. Awesome. And then you prep them for the interview. If you're going to do an EF, you explain to them that process. If you're going to do a film interview, you explain to them that process. And then, all right, congratulations, you got qualified, woo-hoo. You just got qualified for up to 35,000, it's awesome. And I just kind of stop right there. Now I know we talked about the 10, and then I'll just let them kind of fester on that. Because once people get qualified, it does something. All of a sudden they want to buy more, they're excited, they're happy, they, they qualify. And, 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 and you kind of get second money that way, I call it. Um, 
So perfect, you know, go off with what's one I want, write that up, and then, um, you know, you're getting the bank information, you're closing and staying closed, until I have that bank account, you know, I'm, I'm closing and staying closed. And then, and then um, I give them a folder, I, uh, I give them a folder, I put my business card in there, and, and I put my sticker on it, and I leave the cardinal brochure, I'm going through that cardinal brochure with them, and at this point I'm telling them about the $1,000 guarantee, I've already got them on my books. I'll go to a thousand dollar guarantee, just give them peace of mind that this is the best plan out there for them. I'm their agent for life. Here's all my contact information. And then um, I say, well, for any questions for me on this? They always never have any questions. And then I say, uh, okay, cool. I'm gonna quiz you and see how much you were paying attention, okay? <laughs> I literally said, I'm gonna quiz you and see how much you were paying attention. And they all kind of look at what? I'm like, okay, is this whole life or term life? Hold on. Will it ever cancel or expire? How much coverage did you get? Will that number go down? No. How much is it going up? It's close. Will that number ever go up? No. When does it kick in? Today. Well, I actually picked on another firm and make the first payment, but yeah, day one. Right, perfect, yep. Uh, who's the beneficiary? What's the name of the company? And last question, what's your agent's name? <laughs> they never know. About 50% <laughs> <laughs> of the time they get it, they're like, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> great, man. That was great. But no, I started doing that quiz. That's something I started doing that helps with persistency. Because if somebody ever comes to their door, they know they've got a whole life. They know they got 15,000. And they've said this stuff out loud. They didn't know my name until now they've said my name. And now they know my name. Probably. So, so get them to speak out loud with their policy and stuff. And they're going to it's going to stick. And um, you know, then I leave them that folder. And, and um, I should have like, so I'm sure I missed some things in there and stuff. But, uh, Pretty much how I do it. You're the man, dude. That's great, bro. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's no, the no. Beginning of awesome. and, uh, we're all on the same team. That was great, man.